respected chairman, the panelists, and the audience. Very good morning. So today's topic is the PCI in non HD elevation SES, the current concepts. We know that during last one decade, there's a tremendous improvement in the treatment of SES, particularly through the PCI or through the CABZ. In fact, the, uh, if we uh, take the group SES as a two, uh, all together, you, in the, only 33% of the patients go, uh, uh, falls in the category of HD elevation myocardial infarction, but more, almost two thirds of the patients in the group of this group in HD elevation. There is no HD elevation, but the patient is suffering from SES. Now, in, but in the treatment of ST elevation myocardial infarction, many things have been clarified. We know that when to intervene, how to intervene, and whether we'll do the complete inter uh, uh, revascularization or not, this way, yeah, has already been clarified. But this is not very important, this is not very clear in case of non ST elevation myocardial infarction. Why an invasive procedure is required in this set of patients? First, the confirmation of diagnosis. Second, the identification of culprit lesion and establishment of the optimal myocardial revascularization strategy. Look at the second point, identification of culprit lesion. Identification of culprit lesion in ST elevation myocardial elevation may be easy, but it is not so easy in case of non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. Because identification of the culprit lesion starts in ST elevation myocardial infarction, ST elevation myocardial infarction, right in the emergency room. If I see the ST elevation in lead 1 AVL and V1 to V6, we know that we are going to intervene in the LAD, even with the, we were seeing the ECG, we can understand that which part of the LAD is also involved. If we see that, that the ST elevation in lead to lead 3 AVF, we know that it's the inferior MI. Either the LCX or RCA has gone, so we'll have to intervene there. If ST elevation is more, in lead 3 is more than lead 2, it indicates that the patient has got RCA involvement, but it is not so clear. ECG sometimes misleading and it is a black hole. May, ECG may be absolutely normal and sometimes ECG may show elevation depression and many things, so it's the important. The efficacy of immediate reperfusion in the setting of HTME is well established, we know that. In patient with HTME, the efficacy of invasive strategy with revascularization is also appropriate, but we are already confused when to intervene. So in the intervention, PCI in case of non ht elevation myocardial infarction, two important things should be answered. One thing is that the timing of revascularization, and second thing is that completeness of the revascularization in ht elevation myocardial infarction. Complete revascularization, this thing has been clarified in case of ST elevation myocardial infarction. We know that in ST elevation myocardial infarction, first you'll have to do the culprit lesion, then stage it. It is a class one indication. Yes, the non-culprit non lesion also can be done in the ST elevation myocardial infarction, but that is class 2B indication. Class 2B, whether it is helpful or not, it is uncertain. So these are the questions. So what, what the data says? This is the Vanquish trial, Frisch trial, Rita 3 trial, Tactics TB trial, ISR Cool trial, and ICTAS trial. These are the trials were done on the non ST elevation myocardial infarction before 2010. And this, they gave a contradictory result. Vanquish, since the publication of the Vanquish trial in 1998, this controversy started. Whether the patient with non ST elevation myocardial infarction should go early invasive procedure or delayed invasive procedure remains uncertain. But nowadays, the important trial have been published, particularly the, the Timex trial and the verdict trial. Most of the conclusion drawn in the ESC and, uh, and, and the ACC are taken from the, either from Timex or from verdict trial. Now I show, so when to revascularize the patient presenting with HTME? Now you see that Timex trial. They randomize the patient within 24 hours or in the 36 hours of the initial strategy. But if you see that, if you look at the results, the results is not very different. If the patient goes intervention within 24 hours or 36 hours, the primary endpoints in 9.6% versus 11.3%, it's, it's not very different. But this time it showed that those patients are very high risk patients, they do good with the early intervention. The Riddell Instimi trial, this is a very optimistic trial in favor of invasive um, arm. So they randomized the patient within two hours of admission. That means just after admission, they took the patient in the uh, 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 cath lab. But this is a Serbian trial. And another important thing is that in the era of the, the drug eluting stain, they use 70% cases, they use the bare metal stain. And this difference is very in favor of um, uh, uh, early invasive strategy. 4.3% versus 13%, that means the big difference. This trial shows that any patient with uh, the uh, non ST elevation myocardial should straight away go to the cath lab. Now this is a verdict trial. This is the most important trial that's published in the recent past. 
But if you look at this uh, result of this trial, there is no great difference between the early invasive and late invasive. But this verdict trial gave a verdict that those patients are high risk. They do good with the, the you know, early invasive trial if it is, can be done within 12 hours of the admission. Now, verdict are saying very early invasive angiology, angiography, no help overall, overall no help. But those who are high risk, they get benefit from the intervention. Now, how we know which of the patients are high risk and which are not? Gray's trial. Before 2010, most of the trials used the Timmy risk score, but nowadays the Gray's sc scoring system is important. 140 is the gray zone. If the gray score is more than 140, that means the patient is a high risk population. Current guidelines recommend an early invasive strategy within 24 hours of hospital admission in patient of STEMI if the gray score is more than 140. Recent, uh, the 2020 European Society Cardiology Guideline acknowledged that there is a gap, definitely, because the treatment of ST elevation myocardial infarction is straightforward, but it is not so straightforward in non ST elevation myocardial infarction, and there is a gap. And one thing we understand that 40 to 80 percent patients who have got the non ST elevation myocardial infarction, they have got multifacial disease. This is also another difficult problem. Should we perform a complete revascularization in patients presenting with non ST elevation myocardial infarction in multifacial disease? So, only one dedicated trial, that is the SMILE trial, the impact of stays compared with the multifacial percutaneous coronary intervention and the clinical outcome with multifacial disease. And this trial is saying that. Doing the completeness of this, uh, uh, the, uh, in case of ST elevation myocardial infarction, we do the culprit lesion, uh, uh, we deal with the culprit lesion first. But if it is possible, in case of non ST elevation uh, myocardial infarction, it is ideal. If, it is, if the operator is capable and the, patient, if the uh, circumstance permit, then we should do the total revascularization in the same time. In the verdict trial, just now I show 76% of the patient underwent complete revascularization during the index procedure. Now, this, when should we complete the revascularization in patients presenting with non ST elevation myocardial infarction? One, one review article published in the heart in this year. Due to lack of robust data, a single stage revascularization seems to be reasonable in patients with good clinical condition, low to moderate coronary anatomic complexity, that means lack of chronic CTO, severely calcified lesion is excluded, if bifurcation lesion requiring two stents. If these things are excluded, if the patient don't have any CTO, hemodynamically stable, and the contrast use is not enough, then these are the patients can go for complete revascularization during the index procedure. How should we guide the revascularization strategy in patients presenting with non ST elevation myocardial infarction with multivessel disease? This is also a problem because the identification of the culprit vessel in non ST elevation myocardial infarction is not so easy. Only the FAME trial, the subgroup analysis said that the maze can be reduced if we go to FFR guided. One FFR guided trial, that is a famous trial, they are saying that FFR guided intervention in the non culprit vessel may be rational, but if you see that difference is not very great. Maze is 8% versus 8.6%, it is not very great. Now, if the patient has got cardiogenic shock, in this a total different subset of the patient, if the patient has got cardiogenic shock, both in ST elevation myocardial, elevation myocardial infarction and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, we'll have to treat the patient, only the culvate vessel should be revascularized and the other vessel should be dealt with later on. Now I'm showing the, what is the recommendation from the ESC. Now ESC says, there's a subgroup of patients, they're very much high risk patients. This patient should go, the coronary intervention within two hours of admission. Which are the, this said, if the patient has got hemodynamic instability, cardiogenic shock, they should go immediate revascularization and uh, with a view to PCI. Then the recurrent and refractory chest pain despite medical treatment, life-threatening arrhythmia, mechanical complication of MI, heart failure, and presence of ST segment depression in uh, more than one millimeter and more than six leads, li uh, and ST elevation in AVR and VR. In any ECG, if the ST depression in more than six leads and ST elevation in AVR and V1 is very important, it indicates that either the left main or the proximal LED is involved. If ST elevation in AVR in more than V1, it indicates left main lesion. If the ST elevation in V1 is more than AVR, it indicates proximal LED lesion, so it can give a guide. Now, second thing that within 24 hours, which of the people should go the invasive procedure and undergo PCI within 24 hours? This patient, diagnosis of STMI is, NSTMI is complete. That means it is a bio, uh, biomarker positive. Dynamic ST changes, 
Stanje Dest Segment Television and Gray Score is 140. Just now I told that for the identification of the high, um, high risk group, Gray Score is very rewarding. Any score more than 140, that means the patient is a high risk population. Now, intracoronary imaging also can be done. Completely vascular during index PCI may be considered in non H television myocardial infarction in multi vessel disease, but it is a 2B indication. And FFR is very rewarding. But you see that FFR guided revascularization is a class 2B indication. Now, I show the, the latest to an 2021 ECCH recommendation, how we should proceed in patients with non ST elevation myocardial infarction. Now, you see that the radial approach is always better than the femoral approach. It is the, the in patient with SES undergoing PCI, a radial approach is indicated in the, uh, in the presence of, a, in, the pref in preference in it to the femoral approach to reduce the risk of death, vascular complication, and bleeding. And this conclusion has been drawn from the two mega trial. One is matrix trial, another is rival trial. So they have shown the maze can be reduced if the patient with non-HT elevation myocardial infarction undergoes intervention through the, the uh, 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 radial route. In patient with non-HT elevation myocardial infarction, who are at elevated risk of recurrent ischemic events are appropriate candidates for revascularization to invasive strategy with an intent to proceed for revascularization is indicated to reduce the cardiovascular risk. This is a class one indication. In patient with ST elevation, uh, non ST elevation myocardial infarction and cardiogenic shock, who are appropriate candidates for revascularization, emergency revascularization is re recommended to reduce the risk of death. In appropriate patients with non ST elevation ECS who have refractory angina, hemodynamic and electrical instability, and immediate invasive strategy with intent to perform revascularization is indicated to improve the uh, outcomes. In patients with non ST elevation myocardial infarction who are initially stabilized and high risk for clinical events, it is reasonable to choose an early invasive strategy within 24 hours over a delayed invasive procedure in to improve outcomes. Now, the patient with non ST elevation myocardial infarction who have failed PCI, having ongoing angina, hemodynamic compromise, and threatened uh, um, occlusion of the open artery with substantial myocardium at risk, who are appropriate candidates for CABG can go for CABG. In patient with ST, non ST elevation myocardial infarction who present with cardiogenic shock, routine multifacial PCI of non culprit lesion in the same setting should not be performed. This, the same thing is also applicable for the ST elevation myocardial infarction. In presence of cardiogenic shock, this uh, uh, conclusion has been drawn from the shock trial and also from the culprit shock trial recently published in 2017. In culprit shock syndrome, shock um, uh, uh, trial, those who had multivessel disease underwent once a single setting um, uh, uh, revascularization, the maze was high. So it is, um, uh, it is um, uh, theoretically rational to do the only the culprit lesion revascularization. Now, who are the person? At what time they should go for revascularization according to the SEG recommendation? Any patient with cardiogenic shock, refractory angina, hemodynamic compromise, they should go for revascularization within two hours of the, uh, 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 yeah, uh, the admission. And high risk patient will go for uh, uh, early invasive strategy within 24 hours of admission. But if the gray score is less than 140, they can know it and they can go for the selective way. But this is the one slide that tells a lot of answer, gives a lot of answer. According to this one, very risk, high risk person, the hemodynamic instability, then the refractory angina, life-threatening arrhythmia, myocardial uh, uh, the, the patient, those who have got a non-ST elevation with, with a mechanical uh, problem, and ST segment depression, widespread ST depression, these persons are the very high risk person should go immediate revascularization within two hours of admission. If the patient is a biomarker positive, gray score is more than 140, they should go invasive procedure with a view to PCI within 24 hours. Other non-selective group, those who are low score, low to intermediate score, that means the gray score is less than 140, they can wait. They can go in the selective way on the routine way. That is the difference between the SEC recommendation and ESC recommendation. In the low and intermediate group of patients, the SEC says any patient with suspicions of the, uh, the acute coronary syndrome, they should go for angiogram during the index admission. But the ECA, ESC says that low and intermediate, they can wait. They can go in a selective way in the ischemia guided way. So that is the difference. Now, the key message I want to give you, a high risk patient with any, any 
non ST elevation myocardial infarction, coronary angiography could, should be done as soon as possible within 24 hours. But if the patient is a high risk group, what does it mean? High risk group, hemodynamic instability, that if the patient has got the cardiogenic shock, if the patient is having a life threatening arrhythmia, or the patient is having ongoing ischemia, severe pain, non responding to the medical therapy, these sets of patients should undergo invasive procedure with a view to do PCI within two hours of admission. Other patients can go within 24 hours. Who are the persons should go uh, within 24 hours? These patients, these subgroups include those are biomarkers and the gray score is more than 140. Sir. Revascularization of the non calculation in patient with non ST elevation myocardial should be attempted. This is difference between the ST elevation myocardial infarction and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. In non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, our target should be to complete the so due to constant of time, I, I am Thank requesting, you. sir.